In Greek, this symbol right here stands for 16. But here, it stands for 3.1459. Here, PI, lowercase, also stands for 3.1459. I like this one better, it's pretty. Now, pi is something most of us learned in the third or fourth grade. Well, unless they were playing kissy face with the teacher so you could get a better grade. I'm just kidding. I didn't like Mr. Stetson that much. So a lot of you may have noticed in recent videos I've been using a lot of wooden gears, which leads to, you know, an inevitable question. Izzy, how do you make wooden gears? Well, the answer is simple. I recently downloaded Matthias Wandel's gear template generator. Before that, I used Matthias Wandel's free online gear template generator. And before that, I used gear tape. That's right, I said gear tape. I'm not sure if this is anything that's ever existed, but it's kind of a system I developed for making gears simple, or as simple as they can be. And this is where pi comes in. It's the one mathematical constant that you'll need to know to make gears with gear tape. So today I'm going to show you how I made these two gears without using any complicated math, just pi, and my gear tape method. Okay, to make the gear tape, the first thing I need to do is decide how big to make the teeth. And because I'm going to use a couple larger gears in this demonstration, the teeth are going to be fairly big. Now when I'm deciding how big to make my teeth, I always start with a drill bit. And this drill bit will be used to drill a hole at the bottom in between each tooth. And that space is what determines the rest of the size of my tooth. For instance, this one is 3 8 So typically what I will do is just double that size for its height. So 3 8 and 3 8 is 3 quarter inches. Now I can't just double the width on this. If I were to go 3 8 and 3 8 that would give me 3 quarters wide. Experience tells me they won't mesh very well. So what I've done in the past is just taken that width, that number, which is 3 8 divided by 3, which gives me 1 8 and then I add it to the original width. So that's 1 8 and 3 8 equals 1 half of an inch. And that gives me the halfway mark between the, tooth, the edge of the tooth and the halfway mark of the tooth itself. So if I add another half inch, I've got a full inch. And that's how wide the, butt, the base of my teeth will be. Now you wouldn't think these would mesh very well, but you have to remember that we're bending these in a circumference. So once these are bent into the circumference and we round this teeth off just a little bit, they're still fairly loose, but they do mesh consistently and very well. Next thing I want to do is kind of round over some of this pointed edge here so it make, helps it mesh a little bit. And I just do that with a sanding board. Take my edge banding and I put some uh, double sided sticky tape on it. And I'm going to run that across a nice straight board. And I don't want to press down too hard because I want that to come back up. But that gives me a nice flat edge to work with. And I'll start over here at one side. And I'll just take my hot glue gun and just doing it as quickly as possible. I'm going to lay that on there and let it set for a second. And then I'm going to use the next one of this, another tooth as a spacer upside down. Make sure it's flush or tight up against the board rather. And do the next one. Forty-two and five-eighths. So I have the difficult part of this build done. I've got my teeth cut, they're all glued down nice and even, and I know the measurement from here to here is 42 and 5 eighths. So if I take that number and divide it by pi, it's gonna give me the diameter of the circle I need to cut out to glue this down to. Now that gives me 13 and 9 sixteenths, but remember I still have three quarter of an inch sticking out top and bottom of that, and that's too big of a gear. I want a gear that's roughly 12 inches. So what I'll do is I'll take the three quarter of an inch and subtract that from 12 twice because I've got a I've got a tooth top and bottom, and that's going to give me an inch and a half minus 12, so that I end up with 10 and a half. 
So I'm gonna multiply 10 and a half by pi, and that gives me 33 inches. So I'm gonna take my tape measure and measure from the back of one tooth to the back of the next tooth closest to it, and that, that puts me right in between two teeth. So I'll go to the next biggest one up, and I am at 33 and a quarter inches. So I'm gonna go 33 and a quarter divided by pi, and that gives me 10 and 9 sixteenths. So I know the circumference of the piece I need to use is, or I knew the, the, the diameter, let me get it right, of the piece I need to cut out is 10 and 9 sixteenths. And that's pretty easy. Now, I've never gotten one to fit exactly right the first time, so I usually need to take a little bit off, and in this case, you'd think that's a really big gap, but really I only need to take less than a sixteenth off the diameter of this, and that'll help bring that in. Alright, it took two more tries on the uh, sander, but I got it, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to get some double-sided tape and stick it on there. Now most of you are thinking that gear is never going to hold up and you'd be right. All I've done at this point is create a pattern that I will use to make another pattern out of MDF and then I'll save that pattern to use to create as many more of these size gears as I need. That's a lot of work just to get a pattern that I can use to make more gears, but once I've got it, I've got it forever. And um, I guess we should make one more gear just to make sure these things mesh okay, huh? So gears cut this way make really good right angle gears as well. Now you can make smaller gears using the same method and the same teeth. But here's the kicker, you can't get too much smaller. You can go from about a 12 inch one, you know, if you can go 40 inches down to about 8 inches. But once you get beyond that certain diameter, it gets small enough, those teeth start skewing out so far that they just don't, the cogs just don't mess very well together. So if you want to make smaller gears, you have to make smaller teeth. I love making gears. I love watching them mesh together. You know, having the ability to make gears as a woodworker opens up a whole new door, a whole new realm to different possibilities for projects. And this is definitely a very plausible way to make gears. They mesh well together and it's not something you have to go out and purchase. It's not difficult to do. Now, if you're going to make a lot of gears, I certainly would suggest Matthias Wandel's, Wandel's, Matthias Wandel's gear template generator. I'll put a link in the description box below. It just makes things easier. But my advice to you would be when you make one gear and you get it just right, make a pattern of it so you have it sitting aside and the next time you need to make a gear, it's a snap. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and check out my Facebook if you haven't had a chance. I'll links in the description box below. Also, we've got some fun, fun stuff coming up that have to do with gears that will benefit you as viewers. We'll talk to you soon.